theaters and little halls and venues, and we had, we were playing it. At the end of it, we were playing at the American Folk Fest in Bangor, Maine. It was a pretty big stage, it was pretty cool. And uh, after the show was done, after our set was done, somebody came over and said, uh, Darren, there's uh, someone who wants to talk to you about banjos. And I thought, perfect. After the show, usually there's a long line of pretty girls that want to talk to the fiddler about fiddling. <laughs> and three or four middle-aged gentlemen who want to talk about their uncle that used to play mandolin at some point. <laughs> so uh, I went over to the side anyway, and there was a lady there, and she opened up with, my grandfather played banjo in the 30s. And I thought, oh, okay, here we go. <laughs> Anyhow, she got to talking to me about her grandfather and him playing the banjo, and that no one had played his banjo since. And she said, you should be playing his banjo. I thought, oh, she's trying to sell me a banjo, <laughs> uh, which I didn't have the money for. And I said, well, you know, I, I thanked her and uh, said I wasn't in the market to buy a new banjo. And she said, well, you should at least see it. You've got to see this banjo. So, uh, so we agreed that the next day we would meet up before we played. So I went a little earlier to the festival the next day and I hung out by the front gate. And, and I didn't see her coming and I didn't see her coming. And finally the stagehand comes over and says, you've got to go sound check. It's time to play. So I went up on stage and there was a banjo case on the stage. And the, the stage guy says, oh yeah, by the way, there was a lady here earlier. She left something for you. She said uh, she's sorry she had to leave early. So I opened up the case and inside was this, this here beautiful 1929 Gibson tenor banjo. I had a similar reaction, but there was more, there was more colorful words in it. <laughs> So anyway, they came with a little note and talked about her grandfather and some pictures and, uh, and just said, uh, as, long, as long as you never sell it, you can play it forever. And she said, if you ever don't want it, just give it to another banjo player for, uh, for no money. And I thought that was the greatest thing. So uh, when I recorded my CD, which uh, just in case anyone hasn't mentioned, you got their CDs by the door. <laughs> you may hear a little more about that later. But uh, when I recorded that, I wanted to make sure that I put as the first track the same set of tunes that Jason and I played that night when she uh, when she came over and gave me a banjo. Uh, so this one is called John Fowler's Banjo. And incidentally, the moral of the story is if anybody has any old Gibson mandolins kicking around the house, we're not sure what to do with.
with John Fowler's